Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of My Room is Really Dirty, because today was the AP Calculus exam. I took BC, and I think it went pretty well, but, like, you know, it's still kind of scary. So, the reason my room is dirty is because I did all these practice tests, and I just kind of left them strewn about in my room, and there's textbooks and stuff everywhere, so it's kind of bad. Also, today, that weight has been lifted off of my shoulders because that exam is over. Also, now I have two metal rods, so I can make an X, I can make a plus sign, I can make a multiplication sign. We got everything here today. And I'm feeling so spicy that I even decided to use blue pen instead of the usual black. So today is a very special episode. It is the last episode in Chapter 1, Limits. Boy, we're going to be moving on to the really fun stuff next, and I'm super excited for that. But we still need to finish off Chapter 1 on a high note, so let's get through that. Also, don't think I didn't notice, I hit 10 subscribers today. So I owe you guys a 10 subscriber special. Not sure what that's going to be or when it's going to happen, but it will happen, and we'll get to that at some point. Definitely after today's special concept, which is infinite limits. I touched on this a little bit in previous episodes, but we're going to get deep, deep and dirty into it this episode. Um, let me get my pen really quick so we can start off. So, infinite limits are very interesting because they show up in mainly two different ways uh, in the form of a horizontal asymptote and a vertical asymptote. Asymptotes, if you don't know what they are, you sure, at this, you sure should at this point, after having spent so much time in algebra and pre-cal, but Asymptotes, I'm not going to write it down here, so I don't know why I did that. Asymptotes are basically lines on a graph that uh, the function approaches over time, but never actually touches. So for example, a horizontal asymptote of the function f of x equals 1 over x would be y equals 0, this line right here. Because over time, the function gets infinitesimally close to y equals 0 and almost touches it but never actually reaches there. Same thing on the other side. Uh, in the same way, a vertical asymptote would be x equals 0 because at 0, approaching from the left and the right, the function approaches uh, x equals 0 but never actually gets there. And this is really perfect for a chapter about limits, because limits are all about getting really close to something but not touching it. So these asymptotes are going to be very important. So let's look at some examples with rational functions to really quickly understand what's going on. So I'm going to draw a completely new graph, and we're going to look at some limits. Let's call this 1 over x minus 6. I believe the graph will look something like this. We're going to have our 6 right here. We're going to have a function coming in from over here and going down this way. And then coming up from here. I'm sorry you guys, that looks terrible. That went too far down. This should be right there, and this should be like that. It looks like it's touching it, but pretend it's not touching it. So what we've got here is a vertical asymptote right here at x equals 6, and a horizontal asymptote here at y equals 0. So let's talk about some ways to identify what the vertical and horizontal asymptotes of a rational function are. Rational functions are basically 
any functions like this with a numerator and a denominator with x terms in it. That's the easiest way I can explain it. Um, so this is in the same category of functions as say x squared minus 6 over x, something like that. It's in the same category of functions. They're called rational functions for some reason. Um, and then let's talk, as I was saying before I went on that dumb tangent, uh, let's talk about how to identify vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So vertical asymptotes occur at the x values where the denominator is equal to zero. So in this case, when you have a bottom that's just one factor, a uh, vertical asymptote is really easy to identify. You just set it equal to zero and then solve for x and then you get your answer. So if we have a more general way of writing this, let's say we have a function y is equal to 1 over x minus c. Your vertical asymptote would be x equals c. So why is that important? We can talk about it with limits. So whenever you have a vertical asymptote, you're going to have usually, uh, in this case, you have one that is, we say, decreasing without bound, because no matter what y value you find, down here you can always find one that's lower. And it's just going down, down, down as far as it possibly can off the graph, approaching what we would call negative infinity. And here you have the function blowing up, getting bigger and bigger and bigger as it approaches 6 from the right, getting bigger and bigger and approaching infinity, as we would call. Uh, infinity is not a number, it's a concept. So you can't treat it as a number. Let's say you have, you can't have something like infinity minus infinity because it's a concept, it's not a number. This does not equal zero. Some infinities are also bigger versus smaller than others, so it's very tricky territory to start doing math with those kinds of things, but I'm getting ahead of myself once again, as usual. Uh, let's talk about the limits of this function. So if we were going to look for the limit as x went to 6 from the left of f of x, what would we say? I believe in a previous video I said that this would be DNE because uh, our function does not approach a specific finite value, which is true, but that's not really telling the entire story. It's not giving us all the information that we would like to have for this problem. So we could be a little bit more specific in our answer and talking about the infinite limits side of things. So another way you could write this is since we see that it's decreasing without bound, getting smaller and smaller and smaller, you'll be at negative 999, negative 1 million, negative a billion, and there'll still be more values below it. No matter what finite value you say is the bottom, there's always gonna be a lower one. So we can say that this limit is equal to negative infinity. But there's an argument to be made that the limit still doesn't exist because it doesn't approach a finite value. So just think in your head, in parentheses, negative infinity, therefore DNE. Because any time you have an infinite limit that approaches infinity or negative infinity, there's always a little bit of uh, wishy-washy, well, it kind of exists, but it kind of doesn't. So the safest problem, or the safest way to answer this question would probably be this. If you have an exam, negative infinity, therefore DNE, because you're showing your understanding that you know the limit doesn't exist, but you're also saying that you can see that it's approaching negative infinity. So that's normally what I do on exams. 
Um, let's talk about what would happen on the other side. So in the exact same way, let's say the limit as x goes to 6 from the right of f of x. In the same way, we see that it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger without bound, increasing without bound. Remember that term. Uh, we can say that this one is infinity, therefore d and e. So this shows that at vertical asymptotes, uh, you're going to have either infinity or negative infinity normally as your left and right hand limits. Uh, it, it's not always going to be a pair of a negative and a positive because in the example of, let's say, f of x equals 1 over x squared, you're going to have a function that looks like this. So instead of a negative infinity and a positive infinity, you're going to have two positive infinities. So it's not always a rule that they come in pairs. Um, you can have two positives, two negatives, etc. Uh, now let's talk about what the horizontal asymptote is doing. The horizontal asymptote is quite a lot more complex than the vertical asymptotes. So let's just analyze what's going on in this function specifically. Uh, what are we really saying when we're looking for the limit as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger of f of x? What we're really saying is, what is the limit as x goes to infinity? The concept, it's not a number, of f of x. What we're really saying there is what value is this function approaching as it's getting close to its horizontal asymptote. That's what you're saying here. Uh, a horizontal asymptote, by definition, is the limit as x goes to infinity of your function or the limit as x goes to negative infinity of your function. If that is a finite number, then that's your horizontal asymptote. Uh, and a vertical asymptote in the same way, if you have a finite value that approaches either infinity or negative infinity, that's a vertical asymptote, uh, generally. <laughs> um, so let's talk about what this value is. This limit right here will always equal the value of your horizontal asymptote, in this case zero. And of course, the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x would be the same thing. It would be 0. So let's talk about some of the rules of how horizontal asymptotes work in other functions. Because there are, you may remember from pre-cal, there are three different rules that apply to uh, how vertical and horizontal asymptotes work. So let's talk about those really quick. Do, 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 do. Erasing very slowly. So how are you guys doing today? You know, Corona is having a big impact on our lives and it's very hard right now, but we're just trying to make it through, you know. I'm done erasing, but I'm just trying to extend this bit, so, okay, uh, let's get back to the program. So, if you have a rational function, right, let's say, uh, let's just say ax squared uh, plus bx plus c over dx squared plus e. Sure, let's say you have that. Uh, how would we find a limit as x goes to infinity of this? It's of course going to be in terms of variables. 
these constants, but is there a way that we could find that out? There is, because if you remember your rules from pre-cal, if you have two uh, polynomials of the same degree uh, in the numerator and the denominator of a rational function, then the horizontal asymptote will be equal to, well, it, not equal to, the horizontal asymptote will be y equals the leading coefficient. So it would be a over d. So how do we get that from this? There has to be a way we can do it. So one trick that is taught for solving these infinite limits is known as dividing by the highest power of x. So you know that uh, in a fraction, whatever you do to the top must be done to the bottom as well. And that's fair game. If you do something to the top, you can as long as you do it to the bottom. So let's do a little bit of manipulation on this and see if we can get some answers. So limit as x goes to infinity of now let's say 1 over x squared times ax squared plus bx plus c. So we're multiplying that to the top. we got to multiply it to the bottom as well. 1 over x squared times bx squared plus e. So this is still valid because we did the same thing to the top and the bottom. So this would be equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of, now let's multiply it out. We'd have a plus b over x plus c over x squared, which is in turn over d plus e over x squared. You may see where this is going already, but what we can actually do is break this down to the individual level and look at each of these terms separately. We could say that limit as x goes to infinity of a plus um, limit as x goes to infinity of b over x plus limit as x goes to infinity of c over x squared over limit, I'm sorry at how long this is, but it has a point, I promise. Okay, so once you have all this done, the limit as x goes to infinity of a constant is just going to be that constant, because the graph of a constant is just going to look like this, where we have y equals a. No matter if it's infinity, negative infinity, any number in between, it's just a constant. So we can simplify this down to a over d so far, and then there's going to be plus something, plus something, plus something. We don't know what it is yet. So now let's think about what would happen here with limit as x goes to infinity of b of x. So we can think about this graphically, but we can also think about this analytically. First, let's look at the graphical approach. We'll use the same little axes over here. Okay, so if you have um, a rational function v over x, if v is a positive number, we're going to have something that looks like this, right? It's going to look like um, just the normal 1 over x function, but multiplied by a constant. If b is less than 0, if it's negative, then we're going to have something that looks like an inverted version of the 1 over x function, but multiplied by a constant. Uh, now let's look at the limit as x goes to infinity of that. These things are both going to approach the same value in the end. 
they're both getting closer and closer and closer to their horizontal asymptote, which in this case is going to be zero. They're getting closer and closer to zero. So we can say the limit as x goes to infinity of b over x is just zero. Now, in the same way, let's look at c over x squared. If c is greater than 0, it's going to look like this, the normal 1 over x squared graph. And these two things are both going to approach 0, 0 over here, 0 over here. If c is less than 0, meaning negative, it's going to be a flipped version of that. But it's still going to approach 0 anyways. So we can say 0 right here. Thinking about this analytically on the other side, um, if we just say limit as b over x, as x goes to infinity, um, this number on the bottom is going to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger, approaching infinity. Uh, and right here on the top, b is just going to be staying the same. So it's going to just be like a constant over a million, over a billion, over a trillion. It's getting bigger and bigger. You're going to have 0 0.50 zeros and then a 1. And then even smaller than that as you keep going. You can think about this analytically. It's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, approach 0. The same thing with these two. As you make the denominator bigger, this thing is going to get smaller. As uh, x blows up without bound, this part is going to approach 0. So what we're left with here is a over d. If you have a rational function with the same degree on top as bottom, as the leading one, as the highest degree, if the degrees are equal, then uh, the horizontal asymptote will be the quotient of the uh, highest degree coefficients. So the top coefficient over the bottom coefficient. That's the proof, I guess, of this right here, which was taught in pre-cal. This is if um, how am I going to say this? Degree top equals degree bottom. Does that make any sense? I guess it kind of does. Uh, let's move on to another case. So we've already talked about uh, the 1 over x business. And in that case, uh, the degree of the bottom is smaller, or wait, the degree of the bottom is bigger than the degree of the top. If we're taking the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x, the top is 1, and the bottom is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. 1 over a million, 1 over a billion, 1 over a trillion. It's getting super, super, super small. It's approaching 0 because this bottom is getting huge and the top is still 1. This is going to happen whenever the degree of the bottom is larger than the degree of the top. And that's because if you have, let's say, for example, limit x goes to infinity of, sorry, that looks like a line, my bad. Let's say x plus 1 over x squared plus 7. And we do the um, divide by highest power rule that we did last time. We would get limit as x goes to infinity. I'll identify the highest power, which is 2. We'll divide everything by x squared. Uh, x over x squared plus 1 over x squared over x squared over x squared plus 7 over x squared. And as you know, uh, the, if the degree of the bottom is bigger than the degree of the top, that part's going to approach 0. So this is going to be 0 plus 0 over 1 plus 0. 
0 over 1 is 0 last time I checked. So if the degree of the bottom is bigger than the degree of the top, then that means your horizontal asymptote is 0. So we'll say if degree uh, bottom is larger than degree top, this really should be numerator and denominator. I'm not in fifth grade, but you get the picture. It's less words to write out. Uh, HA is y equals zero. Okay. There's one final case that I need to talk about. Let's see here. And that one is if the degree of the top, I'll put like a little bullet point here, if degree top is larger than degree bottom. Sorry it's like slanting, I don't know what I'm doing right now. I'm just tired and I've had a difficult week with the test and stuff so I'm just losing it. But bear with me just for a few more minutes. Um, let's say, for example, f of x is equal to x squared plus x plus 1 over x. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. I'm making sure I'm not giving you bad information. Do, 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 do. Okay, we could do the same rule that we've been doing before. We could say that limit x goes to infinity of f of x. I'll skip the step of showing it. Limit x goes to infinity of x squared over x squared plus x over x squared plus 1 over x squared over x over x squared. This is all going to be equal to 1 plus 0 plus 0 over 0. And what does 1 over 0 mean? In calculus, 1 over 0 actually means something. Uh, 1 over 0 is an interesting thing. Because if you think about it, 1 divided by a very, very small number is a really big number. The smaller this number in the denominator gets, the bigger your output is going to be. So if this is the smallest possible number in existence, this is going to be the biggest possible number in existence. It's going to output the concept of infinity. I just said number again, didn't I? It's a concept. It's infinity. It's blowing up and just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. This does not have the same horizontal asymptote that existed before. In this one, um, in this case, uh, if the degree of the top is larger than the degree of the bottom, I believe that the asymptote is not straight. It's going to be like a slant asymptote, if you've talked about that before. I will confirm that really quick. Do, 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 do. Yes, if the degree of the top is larger than the degree of the bottom, you're going to have a slant asymptote that's going to create some kind of infinity or negative infinity situation. Because if you have a function that's going like that, it's going to just keep increasing forever. And on the other side, it's going to keep decreasing forever. So keep that in mind. Those are the rules. If degree of top is larger than degree of bottom, you're going to have a slant asymptote. And you can figure out uh, what the limit is by just using the dividing by highest power method. Okay, so that's all fine and dandy. Uh, we understand the rules now for why the horizontal asymptote things worked in pre-cal. And we understand uh, how the infinite limits work.
So the most important thing of all is going to be, remember, uh, divide everything by highest power of x. And that is mega important. You are going to need to do this stuff when you're doing infinite limits. And also remember that infinity is not a number, it is a concept. And if you use it as a number, you're going to be in deep trouble. Do not ever say infinity minus infinity is equal to zero. Do not say that infinity over infinity equals one or that infinity over negative infinity equals negative one. That's going to get you in big trouble. That's as big of a no-no as saying zero over zero equals one, or zero over zero equals zero. It's just not something that you do. We're going to have things to deal with these later. Don't worry about it right now. Just never make these mistakes. Uh, other than that, I think that wraps up chapter one. So this has kind of been a wild ride, a test run for me so far. I've been learning about <laughs> I've been learning about how to make videos and I'm gonna try and enlist help of some friends for editing. So maybe that'll come in handy with the 10 subscriber special that will be happening in the future. So anyway, hope you enjoyed. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about uh, my favorite, my favorite chapter in the calculus textbook, I think. I still need to think about what my favorite is. It's between this one and a few other ones. But chapter two is really something special because that's when you go from just limits, which are like kind of okay as a concept. They're like cool. To like mind-blowingly useful extreme stuff it's like on another level things that you never thought you would be able to do before can be done and like i said before it's kind of like the jump from uh arithmetic to algebra it felt very similar to the jump between chapters one and two i guess of calculus because you're opening an entirely new field of learning. Uh, remember when I said that calculus was split into the integral and the differential branches? We're going to be going into that differential branch with the tangent line problem in the next episode. So if you want to learn about how to find tangent lines to graphs using, guess what? the thing we just spent five episodes talking about, limits. Limits are very important and fundamental to calculus. That's why they're at the beginning. So make sure you get them down so you can do the harder stuff in the future. Uh, everything kind of builds from this point. So if you don't have a good grasp of limits, then you need to get a good grasp of them or else derivatives and integrals are going to be very difficult for you. So I'm going to sign off for now. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later.